Hey everyone, Lizzie here with the 1955 edition of the Newberry Project. I am reading the books in chronological order and noting any trends I see as we progress. Today's book is called The Wheel on the School by Mainder De Jong. And this book is notable because it takes us to a new setting. And this one is a little Dutch fishing village. What is uh, something noticeable about this book is the illustrations are done by Maurice Sendak, uh, the illustrate, author illustrator of Where the Wild Things Are. So this book, it was cute. I'll give you a summary and then a little analysis. So to start with, this is the first page. And I think this is a funny, funny, interesting way to start a book. It says, uh, chapter one, do you know about storks? To start with, there was Shora. Shora was a fishing village in Holland. It lay on the shore of the North Sea in Friesland, tight against the dike. Maybe that was why it was called Shora. It had some houses and a church and tower. In five of those houses lived the six school children of Shora, so that is important. There were a few more houses, but in those houses lived no children, just old people. They were, well, just old people, so they weren't too important. There were more children too, but young children, toddlers, not school children. So that is not so important to either. I liked that exposition. I thought it was a cute way to open the story. So once we've established the setting, our story actually opens one day at the school. Lena, who's the only girl, interrupts mathematics one day to read an essay she wrote wondering about storks. And honestly, this, uh, this essay really just says, I wonder what storks would be like if storks ever came here. I wonder. And then she talks, you know, like her aunt had storks. And anyway, the other classmates are interested as well because the storks never come to Shora. And, you know, right away, I already like this book a lot better than the last one about Miguel. I, I find the tone is a lot more agreeable. It's a nice, whimsical tone. And I find the children act a lot more like children. I like them a lot better than Miguel. So the teacher assigns them to wonder about storks. I would love an assignment like that. Just go wonder uh, the boys don't take it very seriously. They go dike jumping instead and very meanly telling Lena she is not welcome to join them. But she realizes that all the roofs in the town are pointy. And I'm guessing this is so the snow slides off in the winter. And she also realizes they need a wagon wheel on the roof for the storks to nest in. She stops to visit with Grandma Sybil, who is the oldest woman in town, who tells her about the storks when Grandma Sybil was little. The teacher dismisses the kids early to see if anyone can find a wheel for the school. They return with a bow, but no arrows, a baby carriage, hay, and a crock full of sauerkraut. And I thought this part was funny, so I'm just going to read a little bit. It's on uh, page 43 and 44. In a barn at the end edge of the village, Pierre and Dirk heard the clock in the tower bong out the hour. It stopped them cold. They sat looking at each other guiltily. Twelve o'clock, Dirk told Pierre, and you and I just played. Yeah, I know, Pierre said. They had found a haymow in the barn. They had climbed to the top of the haymow. Of course, there had been no wagon wheel at the top of the hay. They hadn't expected one. But as Pierre had told Dirk virtuously, they were supposed to look where a wheel couldn't possibly be. Of course, having, chill having climbed to the top of the haymow, they had to slide down to the barn floor. That had been such fun, they'd climbed right back, not even pretending to look for a wagon wheel now. It was amazing how fast an hour of fun had flown by. Uh, it goes on and goes on. Uh, we haven't got a wagon wheel, he said woefully. All we've got is a mess. Not even a spoke, Pierre said dolefully. Maybe we better grab up the hay and take it along, Dirk suggested. Hay for a stork? It isn't a goat. No, but we haven't got time to put it back on top of the mow. If we take it along and drop it somewhere, the farmer won't know we played in his hay. It seems like a good idea. At least it was about the best thing to do under the circumstances. They hastily scraped the, the uh, sprawled hay together. Each grabbed up an armful and started running towards school. Boy, that was fun, Pierre said, wasn't it? Yes, Dirk said guiltily, but I hope someone found a wheel. Couldn't we take the hay to the school and say it's for the stork to build a nest with? Pierre suggested. That would show we did something. Maybe, Dirk said doubtfully. But come on, run. It's way past 12. Ah, uh, jumping a paragraph. When they all gathered in the schoolyard, the teacher looked at each one of them in turn. A bow, a baby carriage, 
Two bundles of hay, but no wagon wheel, the teacher said slowly. He looked at Akka. And what did you find, Akka? A crack with sauerkraut, Akka said somberly. But I didn't bring it here. I didn't think it would be any use to Storks. <laughs> and I just, you know, I thought that was a... I thought that was just a funny little interlude there of the treasures that the kids find, which are just completely useless uh, for their for their wheel. But their mood changes quickly when they look up and see two storks flying overhead without stopping, and they realize their items were all very foolish choices. The next five chapters all happen at the same time, as the children split up to look for a wheel. They have adventures and learn about their neighbors. Lena finds a wheel under an overturned boat, and all the characters they've met come together to get it. Most of the characters they meet are quite old, because all of the dads are off on a fishing trip. For the most part, they're pretty funny people, including Janice, who lost his legs to a mosquito caught, excuse me, to an infection caused by a mosquito bite. But the rumor among the kids is that he lost them in a shark attack. And the kids are all drawn to Janice and his stories, and What's funny is he uh, he has like a small collection of rocks to throw at the birds who are trying to eat off of his cherry tree, but the kids have all convinced himself that those rocks are being thrown at children, and you know they think uh, Janice is just this horrible, terrible old man, and he's not. He's a uh, he, his bark is a whole lot worse than his bite. So you know the kids are meeting characters like this in their village, and it was just really sweet. So the dads get home from their fishing trip. And they come to school in a thunderstorm to mount the wheel up on the school. And then the kids have a holiday, playing games with their dads, who are so rarely home. Very quickly, the men get sick of being home, and they can sense the storm breaking. But bad news! The newspaper reports that the storks flying over the ocean at storm time likely perished. Distraught, the kids go by to see Janice. Janice claims that the news story was just speculation by the publisher, and uh, he tries to tell the kids that, you know, this would be the modern equivalent of clickbait, that it's all speculation and just trying to get readership for the paper. But he tells the kids that the storks who normally roosted in Germany, for example, they might have blown west and need a new nest this year. He then shows them a wheel he constructed for his own roof and promises he can make more if the kids bring him scrap wood that the sea washes in. And I won't ruin every detail of the ending, but it should be pretty obvious. The end. And I, you know, I was really surprised. I did not think I was going to like this book. Uh, it's, you know, it's it's very repetitive. Five chapters are exactly the same. Our a group of five children go off and have five different adventures, but they're told from different perspectives. And I liked their voices. I liked hearing all the different adventures they were on uh, trying to find a wheel. I found the kids to be funny. I found their antics to be funny and cute. And I especially liked the older characters. So we had Janice, the old man in the wheelchair, who uh, did not lose his legs in a shark attack. Uh, we have another old man called Dua. And we have Grandma Sybil. And the moral of the story was cute enough, you know, working together, helping your neighbors. I liked that the town elders all joined together and, and helped the kids. You know, they were acting like their surrogate grandparents. And overall, I thought it was a super sweet little book. Um, I was not terribly impressed with the illustrations. They were fine. I mean, they're not where the wild things are, but this is also not a Caldecott, so whatever. Um, this author has several Newbery Honor books. And I am looking forward to reading them once I get to the Honor series. The next book is called Carry On Mr. Bowditch, which is kind of a sailing book, kind of a uh, fictionalized biography. Again, I liked it a lot better than I thought I would. So these books have now been published in the mid-50s. The writing seems to be more modern and they're starting to sound more like children as opposed to adults trying to present what they think kids sound like. Overall, the trend is very much improving. Uh, this book, it was super cute. I do recommend it. It's a little old-fashioned, maybe not for everyone, but it was a very sweet book. This was The Wheel on the School by Minder DeJong, and thanks for watching. Bye!